the Windrunner's voyage back toward the kingdom of Hans the Bear should have been a joyous one. Evelyn had returned from Pimeniniquit with a huge number of powerful gems, but the preparer's work was far from over. Each stone had to be specifically prepared, tumbled and rubbed with rare oils to ensure it kept its magic, then catalogued. Labor that kept Evelyn, Quintal and Pelamor confined to their cabin day and night, under the watchful eye of the ship's crew. The sailors had been well paid to deliver the monks home safely, but that was nothing compared to the value of the gems, a handful of which could buy a man his own kingdom. So, in the heat of boredom, the passing days rumored begat whispers, which bred open angry talk, and in time mutiny, they want the stones. Your men cannot even begin to understand the power of these stones. But we know the value of a ruby or emerald, magic or not. You'll give us them stones and maybe you'll keep your own lives. I think not. Ah. Know this, look upon this man and see the fate of any who speaks against Captain Adjonas or the brothers of Saint Mirabel. Come, Evelyn, we have work to do. Thanks to Quintal's display, the rest of the journey passed peacefully. The sailors were too afraid to look at the monks, much less act against them. While the preparers continued their labor as if nothing had happened. Quintal showed no remorse for having killed the sailor. If anything, he seemed calmer than before, a fact which made Evelyn's blood run cold. It was Paver's Spares, the last month of autumn, when the Windrunner arrived at Saint Mirabel. After more than a year, the initiates had come home. That night, Father Abbot Markwort threw a grand feast to celebrate Evelyn Quintal and Palomar's triumphant return. Though Evelyn didn't stay long, such events always struck him as wrong. The Abelican Order was founded on a vow of poverty. One most of his fellow monks seemed to have forgot, and while Avalyn didn't begrudge them their excesses, he felt no need to join in. Instead he hoped to get one last glimpse of the Windrunner before it set sail. Avalyn still had great affection for the ship and its crew would help him realize the most religious experience of his young life. And he wanted to wish them well. Questions raced through Evelyn's mind. Only a master could create such a fireball. But who? One of his brothers had destroyed the Windrunner. For what purpose? And though he feared the answers would bring him nothing but misery, he had to know. Calling upon the power of the Hematite, Evelyn willed his spirit from his body. Soaring high up through the abbey. 
into Father Abbot Marquardt's chambers. It is done. Did you have to kill them? Sailors make maps. We couldn't allow them to return to Pimininiquit. Agreed. It was God's will. How goes the cataloging? It's nearly complete. We should be ready for the merchants inside a week. The gems should fetch a high price. More than we expected. Evelyn couldn't believe what he was hearing. These holy men, who he'd admired his entire life, were sanctioning murder. And worse, they planned to sell the sacred stones he'd collected, gifts from God, to the highest bidder. What of the preparers? Quintal and Palomar can be controlled, but Evelyn is gifted. None know the stones better than he. And he has served his purpose. Enough, for now we need the boy. After the auction. We'll discuss the fate of Brother Evelyn Dispris. In an instant, Evelyn's world shattered. The church, the man he'd believed in, had been corrupted. There was nothing for Evelyn here anymore. He must leave, must run. But how? Then suddenly, Evelyn knew. <laughs> It was forbidden to use Hamatite to possess the body of another, but he had no other choice. Evelyn needed Syreton. Walking in the body of a master, the rest was almost easy. First to the gem room, where Evelyn took his favorite stones including the huge amethyst, which had killed Thorbrain. Then Evelyn retrieved his body with the help of a guard, too well trained to ask any questions, and headed to the roof. Only then did Evelyn release his hold on Sire and take some small measure of revenge for the crew of Windrunner. What? No! Evelyn drew power from the Malachite he held and began to float in midair, leaving Sire to plummet to the rocks below. No! no. Evelyn had done it. He was free. And he knew that he would never look upon Saint Mirabel again. A mild winter came to Underblock Inanis that year, reminding El Brian of his childhood, of Pony. He had learned much during his time among the elves, how to hunt like them, to fight like them, and even to think like them all under the guidance of Jeravil and Tanta. We have shown you a different way to view the world, one that will aid you in your journeys and trials. In centuries past, we weren't so secluded. Elves and humans lived near each other, sometimes even in a single community. What drove our people apart? The Dactyl. That is the name we give it. Though truthfully, the awakening of the demon is more an event of the whole world than a specific being. It is our own folly that of the human and elf that allows the dark creature to walk the earth. End war, we call that horrible time. And four of every five elves were killed before the demon was defeated. When it was over, we were too few to be known even to the humans who we consider our friends, much less our enemies. So we came here, hiding ourselves with magic and fog. We left the world to the humans, for good or ill. But though we have forsaken the ways and places of humans, we have not forsaken your race. Thus we train those known as the Rangers, the protectors, usually of people who have no idea they need protecting. Maida, your uncle was one of the finest. For forty years he kept a line, a hundred miles long secure from goblins and giants. 
And so shall you, Eldrion the Ranger. When? Soon. Perhaps too soon, the darkness is coming. Nearly two years had passed since Jill's disastrous wedding night, but the pain remained vivid indeed. Since it hadn't been consummated, the marriage had been annulled, but then there was the matter of her crime. The assault of a nobleman was no minor matter in Palmares, one that could have led to her execution. But the judge had been merciful. Jill was exiled from the city and offered a choice. The nunnery or the king's men. The army. She picked the latter. Jill had thrived as a soldier, distinguishing herself in drills and especially the weekly sparring contest. She'd worked her way up from foot soldier to cavalry officer, and eventually earned a place in the elite Coast Point Guards, which is what brought her to the fortress of Pirith Tom, overlooking the vast Mirianic Ocean, where the chief activities seemed to be feasting, drinking, and whoring. There were no real enemies to fight here or anywhere. Hans the Bear had been at peace for longer than anyone could remember. So out of sheer boredom, the soldiers looked for other ways to entertain themselves. Only Jill walked patrols, much to the amusement of her fellows. But she knew what could come. The monsters from Jill's half-remembered past still haunted her. And so she waited. Ever vigilant, ever watchful. How long has he been with us? Elbrine has just passed his sixth year, your highness. And he is ready, Tuntun? He is. The blood of Mather runs thick in his veins. In a half a century we'll be telling our next would-be ranger that he is of the blood of Elbrine. Do you agree, Jeraviel? He is killed, but not yet ready. There's more for Elbrian to learn of himself and of the woodland arts. Give me another year. Would that I could. The humans have settled several communities along the edge of the wilderlands. They've even rebuilt Dundalus. If what we fear is true, they need a protector now. Then you've made your decision, Lady Desolrod. I have. Bring him to us. Elbrine had been to the elven village at the center of Enderblock Inanis before, but this time was different. Tonight, he'd been invited by Lady Deselrod, Queen of the Tuelalfar. Arise, Elbrine. You have lived among us for many years and come to know our ways and our customs. Yet all things must come to an end. You are Elbrian no more, but Tai Marwi. You have been named Nightbird, on this, the evening of your birth. The red band is soaked in permanent salves, both bandage and tourniquet. The green will filter air when placed over the nose and mouth even allow you to pass underwater for a short time. It is called Hawkwing, crafted from dark and fern, a wood as flexible as willow and strong as steel. This will serve you as bow for all your days, and as staff until you have earned your sword, if you ever do. These are great gifts, Nightbird. Tell me, which of them do you value the most? I... none of them. The greatest gift is the name you have given me. The name I earned through your patience and your time. The name that marks me as a ranger and elf friend. There could be no higher honor, no higher responsibility. 
You are ready to face that responsibility. Farewell, Nightbird. Brian ran from the elven forest, driven by a mixture of fear and anticipation. He had come to Enderblock Inanis a frightened child, but left a man. Tall, strong, wise beyond his ears, and with a purpose. O'Brien would return to the Northlands, to Dundalus, Weedy Meadows, and other small frontier towns. And under his protection, the destruction and death of Elbrian's youth would never be repeated. For his father, his mother, and most of all for Pony, Elbrian would defend them. It was his destiny. Elsewhere. Help! He's come back! He? One man did all this? I... The Mad Friar. <laughs> Preparedness. Training. Ho oh, oh, ho what? Take him. Do not lay down for them. You're part of the encroachment, don't you see? You're part of Dactyl's gain. Hear ye the words of truth. Know me for what I am. The hound of ill omen. The messenger of disaster. You're a drunk. The demon Dactyl had been awake for several years, watching, feeling every slaughter of humans in the wilder lands, tasting the blood of every corpse into which a power dipped its infamous cap. The darkness had grown, the humans had become ever weaker. Turn and Dionial was dust in the earth, the Dactyl meant to win this time. To me. The Dactyl's call went out, summoning the evil creatures of Corona. They came slow at first, but they came. Hundreds of Fomorian giants, thousands of Powerys. And tens of thousands of goblins. Each drawn by the demon's dark power and the promise of battle, carnage and conquest. All for the Dactyl. New settlers had rebuilt Dandalus during Elbrian's years among the elves, a fact he found more than a little disturbing. The village of his youth had been born anew, but his friends, his family were gone forever. During the first few months, Elbrian went infrequently to the settlement or its neighbor Weedy Meadows and he always kept his identity hidden. He wasn't El Brian of Dandelis anymore, but Nightbird the Ranger. The Shadowy Protector.
It was in the forest where Elbrine did his true work, punishing over-eager poachers, intercepting bands of goblins who wandered too far south, and keeping a constant vigil for the darkness of which Jeraviel had spoken. But through all of this, Elbrine wasn't completely alone. He did have one ally. Uh, Brad Warden, long an elf friend, had sought Elbrine out soon after he arrived in the Wilderlands. Though the ranger wasn't sure if the centaur had been sent to help him or mock him, Brad Warden tended to do each equally. Don't cook it too long now, laddie. You know I like me meat bloody. I'm preparing it in the elven fashion. Elves, ha. Huh? They're good for wine and they respect the animals and the trees, but they're too much for giggling and too long for manners. What do you know of manners? Just enough to ignore them. Here's some music to ease your digestion. Theirs was a tentative friendship, an offered smile, an exchange of news, and an occasional meal. But it staved off any loneliness Elbrine might have felt, and that was more than enough. Pyrrhith Tom, Come on, Jill, have a drink, just one. You've had more than enough for both of us, Jeffro. Ah, you're no fun. Good night, sir. What? No. God, no. To arms! They're coming! Who's coming? The girl's finally gone mad. I have not. Powerys, four barrel boats. I just saw them. Peace, chill. It was probably just a few whales. Nothing more. Now have a bit of wine and we'll... Earth Tom was lost. They were all dead. The monsters Jill had seen in her nightmares for so long had finally become real. And they were going to consume her. But if Jill was to die, she'd go down fighting. She... What demons we invite into our minds? What monsters? All the world must prepare. Uh, what? You're the Mad Friar. 
Some call me that. Others know me as Brother Evelyn Despers, former of St. Mirabelle. Oh, oh, what? Potion of courage? No, I... You healed me? I did what I could. You were the only survivor. Auris. I... Attacked me. Couldn't find them. It would seem that's we're both dispossessed. Disappointed would be a better word. Will you go inland then? Rumors say the king's men are fielding the greatest force in a generation to take revenge on the dwarves. Ah, uh, it wouldn't matter if I did. The king has a large army, but more drunks than soldiers. They won't be able to catch the Paris, much less defeat them. I won't go back to die for them. I understand. Piety, dignity, poverty. That was the creed of the Abelican Church. The lie. I saw little piety beyond simple rituals, found little dignity in murder, and poverty is not a thing the masters of St. Mirabelle tolerate. So it seems we're two lost lambs in a forest of wolves, met Brother Evelyn. Pity the wolves then, madame. Chill. Just chill. Well then, just chill. I propose we find our way together. The road is safer for two than one. As you wish. In which direction shall we go? Where does your heart bid you travel? North. The Wilderlands. I don't know why you're getting so upset. End of the world is a short trip. We could be there and back before nightfall. Never. Only a maiden I let ride, and then she'd be letting me. Enough. A bit delicate for a ranger, ain't you? Still, I suppose you can't be expected to walk everywhere. And if you can't ride me... You might as well have the next best thing. You're giving him to me? Ah. A magnificent creature like that can't be given, Laddie, but you can ask for his help. And maybe he'll say yes, or maybe he'll trample you. Either way, you'll stop bothering me. Easy. Easy. <laughs> O'Brien's breath was stolen away by the sheer beauty of the horse. His muscled flanks, wide chest, and especially those knowing black eyes. The creature was perfect, as if formed by the hands of God, each of his elements working together in perfect harmony. Symphony. I'll call you Symphony. Will you help me, Symphony? <laughs> and then suddenly, somehow, Elbran knew the stallion would, but on his own terms. And so their pact was sealed. Jill led them north, but in truth she had little idea where she was going. The powery attack had jarred loose fragments of long buried memories, and Jill was trying to follow them, hoping to find some answers about her own lost past. And for his part, Evelyn alternated between manic energy, inflicting his preparedness training wherever they stopped. Ho oh, oh, ho, what? And tortured, feverish nightmares about a demonic creature he called the Dactyl. But still they pressed on, each running from their own ghosts. Ghosts that weren't far behind. Elkenbrook was a village not unlike Dundas, located on the western edge of the Wilderlands, a place once 
alive with laughter and hope, but no more. The Dactyl's army had struck at midday, goblins, giants and powers, working together, spilling blood to please their infernal master. Elkenbrook had fallen before the sun dipped below the horizon. Every man, woman, and child died screaming. But this was merely an appetizer. The real challenge lay to the south, in Hans the Bear. Soon the monstrous horde would be ready to sweep down upon the great kingdom and crush any who dared stand against it. Soon all Corona would be engulfed in darkness. Jill meandered this way and that on the grassy hill outside of Dundalas. She and Evelyn had come to the village last night, from Weedy Meadows, where Jarivas Chilichunk had found her so many years ago. That wasn't her home, and so they continued north, each step seeming to uncover new memories of Jill's life before the Chilichunks, before the nightmare. I saw the halo from here. And I was with someone, someone dear. Images of that life flitted past the edges of her consciousness. Jill knew that she had been happy here, her youth full of freedom and wild games, yet most of the details escaped her. And those that remained chilled her to the bone. And then there were the goblets, fire and screaming. Are you well, my lady? You shouldn't be up here all alone. What? Who are you? My name has never been important, except to one. To a man once of my order who deserted the way and stole from my abbey, Brother Evelyn Despers. To him, my am Brother Justice. I am Doom Incarnate, sent to retrieve what is stole. You lie. Evelyn's no outlaw. Yet he travels with one, a deserter from Perith Talm. How? I know much of you, Jill. Once called Cat Astray. I've chased Evelyn for a long time. But now he'll come to me with a proper bait. <clears throat> Dallas, I apologize for the damage. At times my preparedness training gets out of hand. Apologize with coin, not words. Of course. Why do it anyway? You held your own well enough, I suppose. But you must have known that overwhelmed me, eventually. True, but they needed the practice. Ha <laughs> ha, what? Besides, a town whose history is as dark as that of Dandalus should be better prepared to face danger. Who's that? He didn't fight. Calls himself Nightbird. He's one of the rangers, no doubt. Some say they're elf trade. Others say they're just misfits who find comfort in walking their vigilant patrols, protecting the land, all that nonsense. Fascinating. Five mugs of ale later. Uh, Jill, are you awake? Jill! No. No!
Help. They say you're a ranger. Is that true? Why? It's my companion. She's been taken. A monk, one of my order, is holding her in a cave in the forest and wants me to come bargain for her, but you think it's a trap. Yes, my friend's a good girl. She was born here. Jill's her name, and... Jill? How old is she? I don't know about your age, maybe. What color is her hair? Blonde, why? Go to the cave. I'll help you. But the note says to come alone. To our enemy, you will see him alone. I'm here. I... God, save me. God abandoned you long ago, Avalyn. Just as you abandoned him. Quintal? Once, but no more. I'm Brother Justice, sent to punish you for your crimes. Did you not believe we would discover your treachery? Did you think you can murder a master of Saint Mirabelle and steal such a treasure in gems and then walk free? There is more. There is no more. I will have the stones and your life. You forfeited that when Master Syreton went over the wall. I forfeited that when I refused to accept the perversion of the order. Leave this place, Quintal. You wanted to bargain? I offer you your life in exchange for the woman's. You've fallen, Evelyn. I will have the gems and then I'll send both you and her to the pit of hell. No! no. Sunstone. Your magic cannot harm me, brother. But I can harm you. Step away from them. Fool. Uh. How dare you interfere with the will of God? Ah! The monk's fighting prowess was remarkable, his movements quick and fluid, his frame always in perfect balance, too fast for most humans, but Quintal for all his training was no faster than Tantan, -tan, and no match for Albrian. Ah! Nightbird. I've treated her most serious wounds. We have to get her back to the village. Pony? My pony. I thought you lost to me forever. Uh, help, Brian. You... I came home, as did I. From that moment on, Elbrine and Pony were inseparable, just as they had been in childhood. Elbrine regaled her with stories of his years among the elves, while Pony spoke of Palmaris and her life in the Kingsmen. Together, they uncovered Pony's long hidden memories, some pleasant.
There's where we caught our first jackrabbit. Some not. By the time I got back, the goblins had gone, and everyone they were dead. I hid there for days, waiting for help, but no one came. They fell in love, all over again. My pony, how empty was my life. So empty that I hadn't the heart to even recognize the hole in it. Only now when you have returned to me, do I understand how meaningless it had been. Never that. She flinched at his touch, expecting the violent images from her past to invade her mind. But they were no more. My pony, the colors of the world are returned to me. Here with Elbrine, she was finally at peace. The nightmares that had haunted Pony for so many years had vanished. She was safe.